We are Metro Vocal Group. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a cappella music and how it's been developing over the past 150 years and how this has affected Metro Vocal Group sound. A cappella music is singing without instruments. All the music that you hear is created by only the human voice. The style of a cappella music that has influenced Metro the most is called barbershop music. Back before there was uh, recorded music, we all had to physically create the music to entertain ourselves. Um, in 19, 1910, the first usage of barbershop music was in a, a musical score called Play That Barbershop Chord. In 1912, the first Chinese barbershop quartet was created in San Francisco, and they were called the Zhonghua Four, or in Cantonese, Zhonghua Se. From that, basically during uh, this time, in America, in the mid-1800s to late 1800s, guys would go around and would uh, go to social events, uh, minstrel shows, and of course barbershops, and they were influenced by African-American singing, European hymn singing, and also American folk singing. But they would go to these events and they would harmonize popular songs of the day. They would start off with a simple melody. Darling, that someone is you. Very nice. Next you would hear, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next you would hear a harmony part that was above the melody. Darling, that someone is you. And there always seemed to be a bass in the crowd, so they added the bass part to give that foundation to the sound. Is you darling that someone is you? Very nice, but <laughs> very nice, but just a little bit incomplete. So they added a fourth part, which would be known as the baritone part, to fill out those chords and make that fluid barbershop sound. Is you darling that someone is you? Does it? Now, barbershop sounds, they didn't always have to be soft and sweet. They could also be very strong and quite rhythmical. Let me linger in the shelter. Night. Thank you. That's that's barbershop music. Now, barbershop was very popular in the, in America until the invention of radio and then it started to fade a little bit in popularity. But barbershop music started to change and morph into other styles of music. Thank you, Eric. That led us into the doo-wop era. Now, doo-wop originated in the United States in the 1940s, and uh, it originally started in uh, New York and Philadelphia before expanding west into Cincinnati and Chicago and then eventually ending up in Los Angeles. Now, generally, it would be about three to six people, and they would just gather around on street corners or in subways, and they would just start singing. Um, Doo-wop was built upon simple music and simple lyrics, and the use of vocal group harmony, which derived from the barbershop style, as Eric talked about. Um, it was also known for its swing-like rhythms, and its use of the offbeat or the upbeat to keep time, as well as the use of nonsense syllables or onomatopoeia 
to imitate musical instruments. So for instance, if they wanted to imitate a bass sound, someone would do something like this. So they would continue on with that. If they wanted to imitate guitars, they would do something like shang a lang a lang a shang a shang a shang a shang a lang a lang. Or if they wanted a group of horns, it would sound something like this. Now, doo wop, thank you. Now, doo wop didn't reach its peak until the late 1950s, early 1960s, with groups such as the Drifters, uh, Dion and the Belmonts, as well as Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers with their 1956 hit, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? Why do fools fall in love, oh why? Now, as doo-wop began to increase in popularity, it started to influence the rock, pop, and soul artists of the 1960s. And since then, it um, started to show revivals in the 70s, 80s, and the 90s with groups like um, uh, the Dell Vikings and Huey Lewis and the News, as well as a popular artist by the name of Billy Joel with his 1984 hit, The Longest Time. A -dum -dum -dum. Whoa. Artists of today, like uh, Bruno Mars, uh, the Backstreet Boys, Megan Trainor, um, using this iconic style in their music, it's safe to say that doo-wop laid the foundation for many musical innovations in the rock pop uh, world of today. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Well, now I'd like to tell you about a style of acapella that started around 1980 and still continues to evolve today. Um, contemporary acapella. So let's get started with the 80s. Now, there are two elements that I'm going to mention that were changing from previous styles. Number one, small percussion instruments. Uh, groups started using small percussion instruments like egg shakers and tambourines to add an underlying rhythm to their arrangements. And number two, microphones. Groups started to use microphones for each individual member of the group which allowed them to move around stage a little more and allowed them to try new audio effects that hadn't been tried before. And some of our favorite groups from this time period are The Nylons, Take Six, and The Real Group. Now this moves us into the 90s. Now in the 90s, contemporary acapella starts to take off with groups like Rockapella making regular television appearances on PBS like Do It Acapella and Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego and in 1991, the Contemporary Acapella Society was started by Mr. Deke Sharon. Now this was an opportunity that still goes on today that allows groups to come together, perform, uh, meet each other, compete, and allow their music to be heard. Now also in 1991, Deke Sharon started the acapella group called The House Jacks. Now, The House Jacks are very significant because they are one of the first acapella groups to have a full-time vocal percussionist. Now this is a member whose main focus is to create percussion sounds with the mouth and the voice. Mike, would you be so kind? <laughs> nice, give him a hand, that was pretty good. Now, 
other changing elements uh, during this time period, um, groups started to use more intricate rhythms, uh, which led to more difficult arrangements, and uh, sometimes even more vocal manipulation. Now, Mike mentioned this before. This is creating and emulating instrumental sounds by using the voice. Now, like I said, this had been back as far as the 30s by the Mills Brothers, but it really became more popular in the contemporary time. So we'll give you a couple examples here. I'll do a trumpet for you. <laughs> trumpet sound. Eric, if you'd be so kind, would you give us a trombone sound? Maybe a muted trombone sound. <laughs> Very good. And I'll have the guys join me here. We're going to do a song. This is guitar sounds. Now, this is the intro to a song we do called Stuck in the Middle with You. And now this moves us into the new millennia, 2000 on. Uh, groups like Pentatonix, Mosaic, and Home Free, they all become popular with the introduction of competition television shows like The Sing-Off. Uh, Social media is introduced, which allows groups to stay in contact with their fans on a regular basis and allows them to get their content out for the world to see. And of course, with changing technologies, the music industry changes as well. We see groups using looper pedals, sometimes even more live audio effects, and sometimes even auto-tune in live performance. So now we'd like to do a, a song for you as an example. This is an arrangement by Michael Lance. Uh, but it's originally sung by MKTO. This is classic. Thank you very much. That's pretty much contemporary a cappella. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Metro Vocal Group started in the summer of 1998. We've been together for 18 years. And this is what we looked like back then. <laughs> I'm on the uh, left side, and as you can see, I had a lot more hair then. That's what 18 years of singing a cappella will do to you. Uh, because a lot of us ha were exposed to barbershop music at an early age, most of our repertoire at the, at the, the time we were hired was barbershop music. And as Eric pointed out, barbershop has a lot of different aspects that make it a barbershop sound. Uh, there are four very important aspects. One of it is blend of sound. Uh, the blend of sound is all of us singing almost like we're one voice. If I'm singing a certain way, Eric and Kevin and Michael have to sing the same way. And that creates a certain overtone series in the chorus, which is very pleasant to the audience's ear. Uh, another thing is called the balance of the sound. Sometimes in a chord, I might have to sing a little bit less. My volume might have to be less, but Mike might have to sing a little bit more. So again, the sound is pleasing to the audience's ear. The number one rule in a cappella is tuning. You must be able to sing chords in tune, right? And sing the notes in tune. Uh, but uh, one thing that we really love about barbershop music is what they call a fluid line of sound meaning that the sound never really stops from phrase to phrase. You're hearing a constant sound through the whole song. And so we incorporated uh, this into our repertoire when we first started. And we decided that we wanted to come up with a sound that was um, different, that no one had really heard in the acapella world before. And we thought, well, what if we take both 
the sound of barbershop with that fluid line. And then we mix it with some contemporary a cappella. And so we did that. But that's a problem because in contemporary a cappella, you usually have five people or six people in your group, where we only have four. So we decided that we wanted to take the bass and have him sing both the bass line and the vocal percussion at the same time. So once we incorporated that, we, we were able to make a new sound with a cappella music. And we're going to close with a song that you'll recognize uh, that incorporates both the barbershop fluid line sound, but also contemporary a cappella. This is our version of Bayan's Sushama Rangwo Yujian Jia Yang Deni. Xie Daja.
，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，刘子山。